All right, so we are doing my favorite, which is Google Sheets, of <laughs> course. So instead of doing a Google Slides for my presentation, I have a Google Sheets for my presentation, and I have put the link in the chat for you. So if you would click on the link so that you have the Google Slides, Sheets, it's Sheets, Google Sheets. I definitely know that. Hey, Carolyn, I'm putting in the chat the link to the spreadsheet. That should ask you to make a copy. So if anyone knows me, they know that I love spreadsheets more than you do. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put our name in this big giant box that I made. I merged a bunch of cells. So this is B4. And you're going to put your name in there. Because it doesn't like that. Do right. you want to put it? Ha ha, I tricked you. It only wanted Alice. I use some conditional formatting that when this is empty, I if you put anything other than Alice in there, it turns orangish, and if you put Alice, it turns green. So I have used conditional formatting to read this cell. So let's talk about conditional formatting. So it is the condition by which it formats. So the only thing that this does is formatting. Mary Ann's here. Hey, Mary Ann. Good morning. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I put the link for you in the chat. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. So Mary Ann, when you make your copy, you will see that I have used conditional formatting on B4, this big giant one, that when you type Alice, it turns green, and when you type Marianne, it does not. Mm, okay. So that's just a fun trick, and what's really great about this is it's pretty easy to do that. So if you would right-click on that big box, mm -hmm. and then go down to conditional formatting, it's going to show you all my secrets. Conditional formatting. So it says if the cell is empty, that it's white. Mm -hmm. The text is exactly Alice, that it would be green. If it's not empty, it would be orange. So now mm -hmm. notice when I hover on these conditional formatting rules, that you get what I like to refer to as grippy dots. So you see mm -hmm. these dots that show up here on the very edge, which is letting you know that you can drag and move the rules. Okay. All right. So now notice what happens when I put the orange rule at the top. Nothing. But if I type Alice, wait a minute. This mm. says, if the text is exactly Alice, that it would turn green. But it didn't. Awesome. Doesn't have the capital. No. Nope. Because if I take the grippy dots and I move this to the top, oh, it turns green. So the order matters. Hmm. Mm hmm. It would check the first one first, and then the second, and and the third. Yeah, so that's what it does. It, these are straight up true or false statements. True or false. The text is Alice. True. Do it. Make it green. And remember, it's only doing the formatting. That's all it's doing is the formatting. And what's really cool about conditional formatting is it actually reads the cell. So whatever's in the cell, it's going to do it. So then when I change it, Nancy, mm -hmm. It reads the cell. So what's nice about it is it's not coloring that particular cell, it's that it's reading that cell and doing actions based on that.
but what it's looking for is true or false. So true or false, the text is else. False. Oops, let me get those back. I didn't mean to click on it. False. So it goes to the next one. The cell is not empty. Well, true, it's not empty, that's true. True, then do that formatting. So it's, you're giving it true false statements. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it hits true, because notice here when I type Alice, the first one says the text is Alice. True, the text is Alice, true. So it does that formatting. But if you notice the one below it, the cell is not empty. That's also true, that's true. The cell's not empty, true. But the problem is it never read that one. It never read that one because it stops at true. So as soon as it finds true, it stops looking. That's how the nested if works also, Lisa, which we did yesterday. Yeah. So if I drag this up, then the first one it checks is cell is not empty. Yep. Oh, true, I see. It never checks the second one. It stops. It doesn't keep going down the list. It doesn't check all the conditional formatting rules. It checks the rules one at a time until it hits true. Stop. Interesting. So hmm. It really matters on that. All right. I am mm -hmm. going to put that back. So it's really important that I have the green, the text is exactly Alice first, and then my fallback. Well, what if they type something else? Second. All right, we are going to click on the next tab, and I think many of you have done this with me many, many times, is if you type single-digit numbers, it color codes it. Now, you'll see that I still have the conditional format rules open up on the side. So while I know that for several of you that I have given you my alicekeeler.com slash pixel art before, where you can make a picture, typing single digit numbers, you might not have known the wizard behind the door, right? What is that saying? Don't look at the man behind the wizard of us, whatever, right? And so if you right click and you go to the conditional formatting rules, it's looking from A1 to AZ31. If the text is exactly one, make it red. And if the text is exactly two, make it orange. So that allows me to I'll play one. Anyone? From Minecraft? Yes. <laughs> I am making a creeper. So the I creeper, can, yes. I can type fours and nines and I can make a picture. And if you throw this out to your students, this is alicekeeler.com slash pixel art. And it gives you this template where the kids can type in single digit numbers. And I like to do this because it requires that they create something of their own, creative thinking, and then we could take whatever they make and we do the lesson based on that. So that they would write a story with it, that they would do some sort of a mathematical calculation with it. Um, it's really fun for kids to do and encourages creativity. Okay, and so the way that I've done that is you'll notice that I have a lot of conditional formatting rules on the same range. They're all in range A1, Z, AZ31, but if I type in seven, 77, 777, 7777, you can see I did get different colors. So I said it's exactly this number, put it in there. Okay, let's go to the mm -hmm. next tab. We're gonna do below the score. So if you're on the next tab, we'll do below score. So I have in here a roster of student names with whatever, I, I put random numbers in there, so whatever they stand for, some sort of a rubric score, right? And what I'd like you to do is just highlight some cells. Highlight some cells. We're going to right click and do conditional formatting. Right click and conditional formatting. And you see it defaults to 
the range I've highlighted, if it's not empty, make it this weird green. Well, that's not exactly what I want. So the place to focus is where it says format rules. It says format the cells if. If you click on this, you get a list. It's not empty. It is empty. The text contains versus the text is exactly. That's a big difference, right? Cat and caterpillar, the text contains. So for mm -hmm. spelling, if you're not sure they'll spell it right, sometimes I'll do text contains instead of text exactly. If I'm having an open response, so I can't have it self-graded because they, they're going to write me a whole paragraph, right? But I, they should probably use a, a key vocabulary word. Then I'll do text contains the vocabulary word versus text is exactly where I'm trying to match my answer, which is what I did on the first one is exactly Alice. Mm -hmm. So text contains, text does not contain, text starts with and ends with. And I can honestly say I've never used either of those and I don't know why. Because right now I'm thinking I could use that. And I use text as exactly quite often. Now, dates are really nice because if you use a Google form, you want to know if the date is before or after a certain date. So those are certainly nice. And again, the only thing that's going to do for you, though, is color code it. It only does the formatting. And then if it's numbers, you can test if it's equal to or greater than or less than is between. So as teachers, where well, we have a lot of data and we have all kinds of scores for whatever the assessment type things is, these things down here are really pretty helpful. And then I'm not sure who suggested this webinar. It might have been me. If you really want to get like manly with your conditional formatting, then sometimes we should, with some time, that's not today, we should do a custom formula one for those who would like to get really extra nerdy. But it is very confusing, and I will lose everybody who's with me on just how to do the conditional formatting. So we'll do it as its own jam. So you'll notice if it's not empty that I can make it purple, or I can make it yellow. I can turn the font color blue. I can do a strike through. I can underline, italicize, or bold. But all I can do to it is format. All right. So what do I want to do to this sucker if they have a low score? So let's just click on column indicator C. So we have the whole column. We're going to highlight the whole column indicator C. I'm going to add a rule. And I'm going to say if. It is less than a three. It needs to be red. You see how quickly and easily it just whoop, lights up your spreadsheet. And so the way that I did that, let's do it again. I'm going to highlight column D. I'm going to highlight column D. So I'm going to apply this conditional formatting to the entire column. I'm going to add another rule. And if it is less than four, make it orange. What if you want a whole gradient of colors? So you remember when we came back to that other one where I had my name, if it was my name, it was green, but if it was not empty, it was orange, and it mattered what order I put those in. So if I have is less than four, and then I do is less than three, and I make those red, you'll notice none of them are red. None of them are red. Because if it's less than four, it's also less than, I mean, if it's less than three, it's also less than four. So it never gets to the part where it checks it. Like, yeah, it's less than four, it's orange. But if I move this up, I now see that it first checks for being less than three and then checks for being less than four. So I can add another rule. What if it is less than five? I can make it yellow. And if I add another rule, 
if it is exactly 5 equal to 5, we'll make it green. So that order matters there in the conditional formatting rules. So you're like, what do you want it to check for first? If it's not that, what should it check for? If it's not that, what should it check for? Now I could build this whole thing in reverse and say if it's equal to five, make it green. And if it's greater than, oh, excuse me, if it's greater than four, make it green. If it's greater than three, make it orange, right? I could build it in reverse with the greater than lessons, but the order of those definitely matter. I can also do it to the entire thing all at once. You know, I highlight a bunch of columns. If I highlight a bunch of columns, I can add another rule. And if the text is less than three, I want it to be orange. And then notice before I hit done, it says add another rule. Before I hit done. If before I hit done, I add another rule, it actually copies the whole conditional formatting. So now what if it's less than four? I want it to be yellow. But it allows me to do this a little bit faster if you just scroll down just a little bit in the toolbar. If you're doing your conditional formatting rules and you want to do another rule on that same range, don't hit done. Hit add another rule. And then it'll speed up this process quite significantly. Because then all I have to do is just edit the condition and edit the format color that I want it. Can you change the conditional formatting once you press done? Oh, of course. Yeah, you just click on it and edit it. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. Any other questions? If you click on grade the answer. Click on grade the answer. So pretend we have a Google form. And what I've done is in row one is I have highlighted what is the right answer. Or I've put the right answer rather. So in each column, the students have submitted their answers to this quiz. And how do I know if they got it right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of column B. I'm going to right click and choose conditional formatting. You can also get it out of the format menu. I just like to right click. Right? And I format the cells if the text is exactly cat. Right, green. I'm not going to hit done because I'm going to add another rule. And if it is not empty, but not cat, we're going to do red. So I highlight the entire column. I've Now, the way that I do a Google form, I fill it out before I give it to the students so I know what all the right answers are. And then that way, when I go and I set up my conditional formatting rules, I know what, what to type into the conditional formatting there. Now I can use the custom rule to do make it a little snazzier with a formula, but we're not doing that today. Right? And so if I know what the right answers are, it makes it real quick that I just go through my form. I'm going to hit done. I click on the column. I know the right answer is chocolate. So I'm going to add a rule. The text is exactly chocolate. And I'm going to make it green. Or blue apparently. I'm going to add another rule that if it's not empty, make it yellow. So when I make a Google form, before I have people fill it out, I go to each row or each column in the spreadsheet. And each column of the spreadsheet, I apply conditional formatting. And when they submit, their answers will automatically light up. Now, the way to do that is you have to hit the whole column. You have to highlight the whole column. So anything in that column is conditional formatted. I'm going to go back to the below score one 
find a column I didn't highlight. Just because these have numbers, I'm going to go to the conditional formatting. I just want to point out the default is single color. I also could have used a color scale. So it automatically sets those. I'm like, yeah, but I don't want green. I want it to be red. And you'll notice you can reverse it so it's light to dark if you would rather. And you can customize the colors. But it'll automatically set up a gradient based on your low, middle, and high value. Makes it a little bit quicker on your scores. All right, conditional formatting questions. Let's go ahead and add a new sheet. Just add a new sheet. Just going to click the plus icon in the bottom left. Choose Add Sheet. And if you'll just highlight a whole chunk of cells, like a whole bunch of them. In the toolbar, you can find Merge Cells. So it's just to the left of the centering icon. Now, you'll notice my screen's a little small, so it ends up as three dots. The more options menus, your tool might be hidden there if your screen's not super wide. So one of the things I like to do often is I merge my cells. Then I go a little bit to the right, and I center my cells. And I go a little bit to the right, and I vertically center my cells. And I like to turn on word wrapping. So just kind of go down the row. I like to make my font bigger. And I like to use a different font. So when I type in there, I got, I'm filling up the space, you know? So now, here's where I can apply conditional formatting rules. What do I want kids to put in this box? So say this is an answer box. What do I want them to put in it? So I go to Format, Conditional Formatting. I right click, I always right click. But you can go to Format, Conditional Formatting, and that's where you can start to build those rules. If the text is exactly the right answer, make it green, come down, don't hit done, add another rule, and if it is, not empty, so they've typed in something. I make it peach. So that's one thing I like to do is to design my spreadsheets with students where I highlight a box, I merge all the cells, and I set conditional formatting on it so they know that if they put the right thing in the box. And that's really helpful for making them self-checking informative. It's not great for, ant for tests because they can just go look at the formatting rules. It's pretty easy. They right-click, the formatting rules says what the answer is. But it has lots of fun uses. All right, any questions? Anything I can help you with? Okay. Okay, I missed something. Okay, tell I, me. I, I, missed, I missed adding the second rule. I, I, I'm not clicking done, so how do I? So if you just go ahead, a little bit, Carolyn, you'll see that it depends on how tall my screen is. So right now it's not hiding, but under the word cancel, it says add another rule. Okay. But you've said you to scroll for it. You don't do it. When I see, when, let me just see when I do that. Let's see what happens. I do. Text is exactly. It brings in what was done before. Yes, it does. Exactly. It brings in what was done before so that I don't have to reset the rules. Now I can just be like, well, if it says okay. okay. So Okay. I thought I was doing something wrong. It preserves the range and it preserves the format rule. So I don't have to type it again every time. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's really helpful when you're like applying multiple tests to the same range. 
someday are you going to do if then? I did an if one just yesterday, was it, Lisa? Oh, it. Okay, sorry. No problem. It's on, <laughs> on premium page I'll right check now. It out. Go I'll to check the it out. Print content, it's there. Is there a way to hide the rules from, from the uh, mm -hmm. students so that they don't no. cheat? Mm -mm. If you use it to build a game or something? I mean, there, it, really the way to do it is with the custom rule where you design it with a formula so they can't really tell what this answer is supposed to be. Oh, I have. I've used the if and, and then some of the smartest kids, you know, that would tell you, oh, here's the answer. I can see it in the function bar. I just tell them what's the fun in that. Hmm. So, um, with your question, Lauren, about if statements, which is not conditional formatting, those are two totally separate things. Okay. Uh, you can build, you can have an extra sheet, and that you do all your formulas on that sheet. And on the sheet that has the game board, it says equals the other sheet, you know, that it references the other sheet. And then you hide that sheet and lock it. That's not foolproof, not even yep. close. But it's it's helpful. I mean, if kids are trying to cheat, you're not going to stop them. But if they just like they click on it and you have the if rule in the cell and they just happen to be able to see it up in the function bar. I mean, it's right. The function bar is right there. Here's the function bar. Right. So where it's up there at the top, the smaller words function bar. I can't stop them from seeing that because we have to remember when you make a game, you're hacking it into a game. It's a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets meant to communicate data. It's not meant to hide data. So um, if you want to hide things or do school stuff that this is really just not designed for, uh, you got to do some hacks. It's possible. But you can't hide the conditional formatting. Whatever your conditional formatting rules are, they are. Um, I can still get a little tricky with them. No, I can't. I've actually tested this. I cannot apply conditional formatting rules on one sheet based off of another sheet. I've tried. Can't do it. I see. And if you use the if um, function, then uh, what happens if, because I know that you cannot protect uh, a spreadsheet that they own, right? So if if Correct. you if you make it into if you make it into um, like they have to have a copy each one of them then they are the owners of that copy and so you can't you can hide the information from them they can see everything yeah that's where you might want to use template tab where they all have their own tab and they play the game on their tab because then you're the owner oh. So they would just, if they are not owners, but they are just editors, then they can't, they can't unlock the, uh, the protection. Correct. Okay. Good. Correct. I'll do it this way. Um, yeah. If I say equals, if I'm just gonna say some random number is less than point three, comma Alice, otherwise Nancy, right? So you'll see now that it says Na it's Nancy, so it is this bluish color, um, and what I'm doing is every time you edit the spreadsheet, there we go, every time you edit the spreadsheet, it re-randomizes. So it, it was just switching between Alice and Nancy randomly. And as soon as it hit Alice, then the conditional format formatting showed that it was Alice. Now, when I click on Alice, you can see my formula up here in the function bar. You wouldn't see the conditional formatting rules unless you right-clicked and chose conditional formatting. Mm. The format, you know, the conditional formatting. Either way, same thing. So they don't just don't the touch them. They go there on purpose. Um, if it's on, if you have a formula, which is not formatting, uh, you can't help them from seeing your formula. Right. It's right there. You click on the cell. It shows it to you as you pointed out, which is why what I would do is I would write my formula somewhere over here.
I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I put it, I put the value over there and it's going to do circular reference. Dang it. Um, somehow I just say it equals, you know, equals whatever that says. So you only see the formula is equal in this cell instead of the cells that actually has the formula. You reference that cell and then you hide the column. It's not foolproof. I didn't even do a good job of showing. I did a terrible job of showing that is what I did. But you don't you you don't want the cell they click on to have the formula for your example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? So just don't um, teach them uh, formatting. I'm sorry, what? formatting. Don't teach them that so they don't know. <laughs> Alice, is this is not related to the, um, the spreadsheet, but is the okay. first slide available for but your friends? First slide's not premium, but it has it's freemium. So Alice, it's premium. Okay. Alice.com slash first slide is mostly free. And then I have a few things that I made during so when I code things during my work hours of for premium members, uh, those items I hold back. So the stuff I coded during those hours is under the free the premium menu. So okay. it has a premium button and asks you for the password. Okay. All right. So, but the basic first slide is available for non-premium. Yep, and most okay. of the features are free. The breakout room features are free, and most of the features are free. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Great. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.